Nearest and dearest, P584, programme number 15, part one, take one. Fella following me. Congratulations, madam. He's got rubber shoes on. Well, they're his feet, love. Yeah, well, he's got rubber shoes on so he can make a quick getaway, you see. What he's gonna do is stick me up and grab all I've got. Have you not brought your bodyguard this week? No, oh, yes, here he is. I'm sorry, Miss Nelly, I got held up. Did you? By a policeman. Oh, well, did you not tell him you were going to protect me with your weapon? Oh. <laughs> He made me put it away. He, <laughs> he said it was offensive. <laughs> so I hid it under my mat. <laughs> Look at the state of him, Jeremy. Humphrey Bogart lives. <laughs> I take him just one of the weekly wages for the factory. That's right, yes. Get off me! Help me! Hit him! Hit him! Stop! Stop! Before you put your boot in, Humphrey, perhaps you'd like to be introduced. This is Mr. Melodieu, our new manager. Oh, don't get it. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Mildew? <laughs> you haven't had the pleasure of me yet, have you? <laughs> no, but I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Pledge. Oh, thank you, very glad. Yeah, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Pledge. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you about your enormous overdraft. What do you mean? How dare? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, oh, yes, my overdraft. Oh, don't worry about that. I mean, I'll soon settle that. Oh, splendid. Yes, I'll make you out a check. Oh, Johnny, <laughs> Hey, what do you mean you can't do that? Oh, it's no trouble at all, no trouble. You just give uh, Stan the wages and I'll make out the check. I think... <laughs> Miss Pledge, your firm is virtually bankrupt since that new company, Hardcastle's Pickle, set up in opposition to you. The bank can no longer extend you any credit. Oh. Well, how about lending us some money, then? So what you're saying, Mr. Hardcastle, is that if I sign this and your firm takes over my factory, I get a seat on your board of directors. You shall have an office with your name on it and a key to our executive lavatory. It is inside, is it? Uh, ah, well, it will be. Oh. And you shall also have your own personal private secretary. <gasps> Could I have one of those with long legs? I'll go further. I'll slip in one with a nice pair of the other as well. <laughs> well, this takes a lot of thinking over, you know. I'll have to give it great consideration, and the answer is yes. By God, Eli, you know how to play hard to get. Well, Eli! Oh, bloody hell. We can't pay the wages. We've been bankrupted. <laughs> you mean bankrupt? Yes. Yes, it's that Harry. Ha ha Hard-hearted Harry Hardcastle has done it. You wait till I get my hands on him. I'll stuff his olives for him. <laughs> what are you doing for? Who's that? That's Hard-hearted Harry. I mean, meet Mr Hardcastle. Oh, so you're the, the one that believes in this new method of mass prostitution, eh? <laughs> Let me tell you that it is the pickle that counts. Every pickle of pledges has been handled by human hand. And feet, and no, feet. Come here, come here. He's made us a very generous offer for this dump, I mean, place. Haven't you, Mr Hardcastle, sir? Please, please. <laughs> I were. But why should I buy you out if I can starve you out? I'll fight you to the last drop of pickling vinegar. <laughs> what are you on about, Billy? You know, for the last six months, we've been swiping our vinegar off bloody chip shop counters. I'm not going to lie down on, on, in front of him and let it get on top of me. <laughs> Nelly, we can't compete with him. He's got a modern factory. You've just said yourself we're bankrupt. We've got over those sort of things before. Look at me mum and dad in the 1930s, during the Depression. Yes, but they never knew anything good, so they never missed anything. Well, I know my mother was a tower of strength. Look how she took him washing, ah. eh, when we were in trouble. Ah, for the people's bloody clotheslines. 
Pledge's pickles have survived for 129 years. And they will survive for another 125 years. Ah, and I know how we're going to survive, love. How? I'm going down on my knees to Mr. Hardcastle and ask him to take us over. He will take us over over my dog's body. <laughs> you mean over your dead body? I don't care whose dog's dead body he's going to take us over. He's not going to take us over. <laughs> Mm -hmm. three, and that's it. <clears throat> Is that all the wages I'm getting this week, Miss Nelly? We've all got to make sacrifices, you know. I mean, where do you think all our furniture is, you know? Ah, uh, Lily Entwistle walked past pawn shop this morning. She looked in window. She went in for a cup of tea. She thought it were our bloody house. <laughs> see, things have changed, you see, Stan. We're not exactly in the effluent society. <laughs> If you ask me, we're in the effluent right up to our eyeballs. Hey, I can't live on this. The cost of living's very high in my new skyscraper council flat. Skyscraper council flat? Ah, you know, Freddie Finnegan had one of them. Did he? Ah, first time rent man called. He opted out at back window as usual. He forgot he was on 19th floor. I thought I hadn't seen him. <laughs> Can't, can't you spare me another few shillings? I would if I could, but I can't. Oh, well. Back goes a bloody colour television oh. set. <laughs> <laughs> now see what you've done. Yeah. We'll have them all round here with their hard luck stories. Well, they can come because there's no for them. Mug off, we're broke. <laughs> oh, we're skint. I've told you we've got no for you. Go on, up it go. Oh, Mr. Hardcastle, sir. Oh, it is nice to see you. Excuse me, your shoelaces are not done. Come out of it. Didn't I tell you not to doorstep my dog and again? Hang on, Nelly, hang on. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you've come, sir. You have come to take us over, please, sir, haven't get you? Get out of it. You get out of it. Get down to the wine cellar and get the best bottle of our burgundy so we can celebrate takeover. Burgundy? I shouldn't think you've got a bottle of dandelion and burdock between you. <laughs> Look at the state that you're in. Ah, you supping bout, Eli. Bricks is down and the bottoms fell out. Or, or as we say down on the stock exchange, you're well and truly knackered. We are not. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, we are not knackered. We are not knackered, knickered or knockered. <laughs> not while my loyal workers give me their loving infection. <laughs> That's a good one, your loyal and loving workers. <laughs> They're under contract to me now. <laughs> to whom do you think you're undressing? <laughs> do you think I came up the air well on me mum's piano? <laughs> Those loyal workers will stand by this stinking ship. <laughs> well, if you don't believe me, ask them yourself. No. Come on, lads, mush, mush. Bloody hell, it's the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> This is going to make you laugh, this lot. <laughs> You're going to laugh like anything you are. <laughs> I had a concert, I'll tell you the truth. Do you know what this fella says here? <laughs> this one here. <laughs> he says that you are all going to pickle for him. <laughs> that makes you laugh, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> well, say something. It's true, Miss Nelly. We are going to work for him. <laughs> you specky eyed Skunk heap, you! <laughs> you bunch of swizzlings. Oh. Only this morning, Aunt Nelly was saying, listen to the happy chatter coming from the pickling shed. That wasn't happy chatter, Eli. That was our bellies rumbling. <laughs> we'll soon settle that tonight at that lovely hot pot supper that I promised you at the Spread Eagle. What do you think about that? Can I come too, please, sir? Come on. <laughs> you don't want his hot pot supper. Besides, spoil your appetite. For the lovely supper I've cooked for you. Have you cooked your supper for me? Honest, Nelly, honest. All right, come on, my lucky lads. You are under contract to me from now on. It's now days of wine and roses. Get fell in down to that pub, feed under the table, and wrap some of that lovely hot pot. How's it going? That's right. Go and get your nasty hot pot. Go on, your wine and roses. All you'll get is potatoes and gristle. I'm telling you, that's right, get down to the Spread Eagle. Hot pot? Ask the landlord of the Spread Eagle about the hot pot. Ask him what happened to his greyhound that ran backwards at Rochdale. <laughs> you have all sold yourself for a message of potash. Come on, Mary, get in that kitchen. Where's this big dinner you've cooked for me? Bye, I'll have waited to go to work on it. Wait a minute, there you are. 
go to work on that. <laughs> one flaming egg? Is that all I'm getting? No, you are not getting one flaming egg. You're getting one half a flaming egg. <laughs> the other half of the flaming egg is for me. <laughs> oh, 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 no. What do you say, mate? <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to get you something to eat, love. Oh, have you nothing better to do than talk to yourself? I'm talking to my stomach. Listen. I think that last message was its final communique. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Sat sitting there for a week now. You'll be getting cogs on your behind. Nelly, I must have something to eat. I'm starving. What about me? It's dropping off me. Bloody suits you. Look, I can't keep that factory going by myself. Did you manage to keep the production line going on your own this morning? Well, my beetroot's boiled over twice and I didn't like the look of my chutney. <laughs> but you'll have to come over me, with me this afternoon. You know, anyway, better get something to eat. What keep, we have? Keep what, up your strength. What we having? We're having uh, pickle salad. Oh, not again. <laughs> Well, I've done it different for you this time, love. How? I've grilled a pickle lily. <laughs> Nelly, a man can't survive on a diet of pickled onions, pickled cabbage, pickled beetroot, followed by stuffed olive pudding. You've no sooner had a meal like that than it's gone with the wind. <laughs> oh, I had a lovely dream last night. I don't I had a great big steak and kidney pudding, all full of lovely onion gravy. No, Nelly, don't. I just took a great big bite and then I woke up. I and I were wet through. What happened? I'd bit a big hole in me hot water bottle. <laughs> hey, you know what I dream about, don't you? No, not that. I'm too weak for that. <laughs> Last night I dreamt about great big juicy steaks. Mm -hmm. I'd rump for starters, fillet for middle course, and sirloin for sweets. Mm -hmm. I never looked at the topless waitress once. <laughs> Nelly. It's a fortnight since we had any meat. Why can't we have any meat? Well, we haven't got any money. That's why we can't have any meat. And don't look at me like that. Don't get any ideas about me and that pork butcher. I'm not doing that for a bit of neck end. <laughs> hey, 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 what are you doing? I must have meat, Nelly. Meat? Hey, a slice of that would go down very well. With some mint sauce or a bit of red currant jelly? <laughs> You've got to be red currant jelly. Well, in that case, there's only one thing left. What do you mean? The horse. Not Storm. This won't be the first time this family's had horse, you know. Where do you think his mother went to during the bloody depression? <laughs> you not and fork into Storm. Or into me, for that matter. Ah, there's only one thing we can do. Think of something else to pawn. Oh, don't look at me. You won't get much for this lot. I've tried. Even the oily firewood man sent it back. We've no left now. My slave bangle's gone. Nelly, we are. The attic. The family heirlooms. Well, we can't do that, Eli. We can't do that. Nelly, think. Roast pork with crispy crackling. Roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, with lovely crispy potatoes and Brussels sprouts, followed by spotted dick. Covered in custard. Made in a big dolly tub. Yes. What are we waiting for? Come on! Right. It's all I fire and unzip your fly. <laughs> Who wants the 78 if he played his ukulele as the ship went down? This sunny boy. You remember Al Jolson? He, when I was little, 
My mother used to put me on my knee and she used to sing, climb upon my knees, sonny boy. She never sang sonny boy to you, did she? Well, what else could she do? You were in the brownies. <laughs> oh, look, me first little baby clogs. Ah, is it true you were wearing them when you were born? <laughs> my mother always said it was a difficult birth. <laughs> Hey, there's only one thing to do. We'll have to get rid of this, then. No, we won't. You'll never do that. That's my mum's wedding dress. Oh, I can see her now at her wedding, walking down the aisle with it on. Uh, of course, you were there at the time, weren't you? I was not even expecting. I mean, uh, expected. Well, as far as I know. Hey, up. What? There's somebody downstairs. Is it a burglars, do you think? Well, I hope for their sake it's cat burglars. It's the only thing left to bloody well sell is the cat. Cooey, Nelly, Eli, have you split it? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> it's Pinky and Perky. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, not family, no, no. I mean, I'm too ashamed, I couldn't face them. Let's keep quiet and they'll go away. No, 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 they've got an idea. What do you mean? We'll keep them here. Why? What for? Well, you know Walter's always been tight with his brass. Hmm? Get down there and touch him up. You are? <laughs> I mean, touch him up for some money, love. We can't lose. What do you mean, we can't lose? He's bound to kick the bucket before we have to pay him back, isn't he? Uh, it's right, then. Come on, we might as well sit down. We can't damage note. Oh, it's a cold hall, is this? Well, it's true what they say. They really are scratching. Oh, really love. And Walter, flower of the morning and flavour of the month. Oh. oh, it is nice to see you. What's that heavy perfume you've got on? Oh, it's not perfume. No, I spilled it all down myself this morning. It's our Walter's bowel water. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lily, Walter, you've caught us all of a flunter, just as we've been cleaned out. I mean, uh, sent the furniture to the cleaners. Oh, fancy. <laughs> well, how are you, Walter? Hey, love? Have they told you when you have to go in to have it out? <laughs> You're not telling. <laughs> They've told him to get plenty of fresh air. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're on his way to have a picnic now. Ooh. Where are you going? The Garden of Remembrance. <laughs> no, we're going to that new lay-by on the bypass. We've never been there yet. He's got his sandwiches with him. <laughs> oh, he does like a bit outside, doesn't he? <laughs> hey, you've cut him plenty, haven't you? Yes, I mean, that cucumber will murder him, you know. Hey, do you think you've overfaced him a bit? Oh, no, he's got his appetite back since he recovered from that accident. Oh. Accident? What accident was that? You know, about a month ago, when he got swept along the gutter by that mechanical road sweep. <laughs> oh, yes, and after he came out in that awful rash, didn't he? They said it were leaf mould. <laughs> He got his compensation from corporation, did he? Oh, yes, it's all come through. Oh, oh it must have been a great uh, sort of magnanimous lot of money you got then, <laughs> seeing as how he was in his own garden when it happened. <laughs> We're not complaining. It was a tidy sum. Wouldn't be surprised if they haven't to put the rates up again. Mm. So you'll be thinking of investing the money somewhere, will you? <laughs> Like in some shares in an old established company, you know, with a forward-looking bunch of directors. You mean like Pledge's Pickles? Oh, Nelly, she's caught on. She has got a brain, this girl. How much? Note. What? Note? What? <laughs> Fisted toe rag, you. Don't you call me Nelly Pledge. When her at Chippy told everybody at Christian Fellowship, I were ashamed to be related. You ashamed of me? You're getting a bit above yourself, aren't you, madam? I've seen you before you had a brass doorstep. Both of you having your dinners off one plate. We've never asked nobody for a shilling for gas, we haven't. No, that's because you're still using candles. And you've no room to talk, Eli Pledge. It's you that's brought this firm down. Look at my Walter. He's never strained his resources. I can tell that that way he walks. <laughs> So we're not stopping here by, to be insulted by jealous folk what's got note. Yes. Well, you won't be singing the Merry Widow once, you know, when he kicks the bucket, because he's the sort that'll leave it to a cat's home in a sweaty sock. <laughs> Nelly, Nelly. What? Half for you, half for me. Wait! <laughs> you take us bread from us now. <laughs> well, when your own flesh and blood turn their back, 
and give you the cold shoulder, you can see the ends in sight. Nellie, you're not throwing towel in, are you, love? And book it as well, too, if you haven't pawned it. Well, it's the old saying, Nelly, from clogs to clogs in three generations. Only me managed it in one. A pledge has pickled on this infested soil since time in memorial. And that was before the war in memorial. I never thought that sick day when pickling had to stop. No. It hurts when you cut off some. I wonder what my dad's thinking up there. Turning in his grave. We did our best, Dad. I mean, he'd have been proud of us. I mean, even our Eli did some work at the end. Didn't he, Eli? Where's he gone? Eli! Eli, where are you? Where are... Gas. I can smell gas. No, we had it turned off. Eli! Hey! Oh, you gave me palpitation in the pulpit. I thought you'd gone to do something. What? In the pulpit? No, Nelly. No, I heard postman at yard, so I went out. Thought I might have got some replies to those begging letters I wrote to football pools with us last week. Begging letters? You haven't sunk as low as that, have we? Begging letters? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Did they send you anything? <laughs> no. You know what these are, don't you? No. Bloody tragic. They're orders for pickles from all over the place. Listen to this, Nelly. Dear sir, please send four dozen jars of your pungent piccolilli and all the, the gherkins you've got. <laughs> a piccolo pattern in the place. Bloody hell, the back, the skinheads. Well, you vipers that I matured in my bosom, what do you want, holiday pay? Uh, well, no, no, Miss Nelly, we've come to ask for his jobs back. Well, you... What? <laughs> your job? I... Oh. oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. And from our Eli's bottom, too. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it's cos we've all been sacked from Hardcastle. Right. Right. <laughs> didn't, you, didn't you see the article in the newspapers? Article? I haven't seen a bloody chip in the newspaper. Never mind about an article. <laughs> Hardcastle's been had up with corporation under hygienic act. <laughs> and they found a foreign body in his pickles. <laughs> foreign body? Whose was it? <laughs> it was a me clock iron. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did he get in there? He was hiding in his feet in, in Hardcastle's vinegar back before he went on a charity walk. Oh, oh you dirty thing, you. Oh. Anyway, they've closed him down and he's gone bust. <laughs> the phantom clogger strikes again. <laughs> well, welcome back, all of you, and thank you. Yes, and in the words of the poet, none of you get pickling. Go on, oh. <laughs> Well, Nelly Love, we've won through. Yes, we have and we always will. There's just one thing, Nelly Love. Yes, Love. I'm still bloody starving. <laughs> me too. My stomach thinks my throat's cut. Still, so, we should get some money this weekend. I know, but it's only bloody Monday. <laughs> Hello. Oh, and what can we do for you, Lily No Nicks? <laughs> well, me and Walter's been talking it over. And we're prepared to bury the hatchet. Oh, so am I. Right in the middle of your Walter's bloody ball then. <laughs> well, you may be pig ignorant, but you are family and you are in trouble and we think we ought to help you. Pig ignorant and what? No, I, 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 you mean you want to give us a bit of Walter's compensation money? No, but we've decided to give you sandwiches. Sandwiches? <laughs> I wouldn't take your sandwiches if you shove them down my throat with a shovel. Well, if that's your attitude. No, this is my attitude to your sandwiches. Go <laughs> so there. There. I see. Yes, this firm's back on its feet. We can buy and sell you five times over. Yeah, so get out. Right, we will do. And don't come back here with your flaming charity. <laughs> that told them. It did. <laughs> I want the I want the spam. Give me the spam. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nearest and dearest, P584, programme number 15, part one, take one. Fella following me. Congratulations, <laughs> madam. He's got rubber shoes on. Well, they're his feet, love. Yeah, well, he's got rubber shoes on so he can make a quick getaway, you see. What he's gonna do is stick me up and grab all I've got. <laughs> Have you not brought your bodyguard this week? No, oh, yes, here he is. I'm sorry, Miss Nelly, I got held up. Did you? By a policeman. Oh, well, did you not tell him you were going to protect me with your weapon? <laughs> He made me put it away. <laughs> he said it was offensive. <laughs> so I hid it under my mat. <laughs> Look at the state of him, Jeremy. Humphrey Bogart lives. <laughs> I'm taking just one of the weekly wages for the factory. That's right, yes. Get off me! Help me! Hit him! Hit him! Stop! Stop! Before you put your boot in, Humphrey, perhaps you'd like to be introduced. This is Mr. Melodieu, our new manager. Oh, don't bit of it. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Mildew? <laughs> you haven't had the pleasure of me yet, have you? <laughs> no, but I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Pledge. Oh, thank you, very glad. Yeah, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Pledge. Mm. I wanted to talk to you about your enormous overdraft. What do you mean? How dare? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, oh, yes, my overdraft. Oh, don't worry about that. I mean, I'll soon settle that. Oh, splendid. Yes, I'll make you out a check. Oh, Johnny, <laughs> hey, what do you mean you can't do that? Oh, it's no trouble at all, no trouble.